established by the presence of God Almighty. And where, where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. Amen. This morning I want to introduce to you mighty, mighty woman of God. She is a great teacher. Hallelujah. Amen. When she speaks, I listen. Amen. Amen. And I'm, I'm not saying this because she's my wife. It is because she's anointed to teach the word of God. We've been married for the last, not 36, but I think 20, 28, I believe. <laughs> I always forget, eh? And it's been a wonderful time to be together, serving God together, and uh, working as a team, and uh, just enjoying life together. And this morning we have to be here, as I said last time, this is our home church every time we're in Kenya. That's why we leave on Monday. We have to make sure that we leave our signature in this church. Because we feel connected in this church. Amen. Amen. So I don't say anything much. I want to introduce to you my wife, who is the speaker of the day today. And her name is Pastor Lucy Kingori. Let's receive her. She's the word of God. Amen. Hey. 
Christ, as we endowed on your word this morning, I pray that you give me the assurance that comes by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you open our uh, you open our hearts and our minds that we may receive this word. We come against every program of hell against your word this morning in the name of Jesus. We declare that the devils that come to steal the word this morning are bound and unled us and are powerless in the name of Jesus. We declare that the hard hearts will become open. We declare every destruction of the mind is arrested in the name of Jesus. And we declare this word will fall on good ground to produce fruit and that fruit will remain for the honor and glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. The word that the Lord has given me is found in Philippians chapter 3 <coughs> and verses I'll start with verse 10 that says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. I go to verse 13 that says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind <clears throat> and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the price of the, of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I have uh, titled my message, Forgetting What Lies Behind and Pressing Forward Towards the Price. Praise the name of Jesus. I have divided it into three. The first one is, I have not apprehended. And the second part is, one thing I do. Forgetting those things that lie behind. And the number three, I press on towards the goal for the price. Praise the name of Jesus. I know as we... Uh, go towards the end of the year, you're evaluating your performance, your achievements, and what you set out to do in 2014. And by all means, you are looking to see what you have accomplished, what has worked, what, what has not worked. And it is interesting that uh, we are going towards the end of the year, and sometimes we just, just uh, zoom through without looking back to think what has happened. Sometimes it is interesting that our mind would like to focus on the negatives. And sometimes you forget the positive. So you go to the new year with a negative mindset. But I want to come to you this morning because I believe the Lord was telling me like Paul that we can forget what lies behind so that we are able to press forward. Most of the times what hinders our forward uh, mobility or forward progress is the negatives that happened in our lives. Sometimes we keep on playing cassettes, negative cassettes, negative music and we have have no way of even stopping that music of what happened, could have been, would have been, should have been, and we are hindered to go forward. That is why Paul said that I, I, you know, this one thing I do, forgetting that which will, uh, uh, falls behind me, and I press forward. Praise the name of Jesus. But it's interesting that this uh, person whom we are talking about started off by saying, I have not apprehended. Maybe you may be looking at this year and see the great things that you have done. Paul was a very zealous person. We know that he was uh, he was educated in the feet of Gamaliel, so he was cool. He was somebody who had status. He's somebody who was known. He was widely traveled. Uh, in the history of the church, he was probably just second to Jesus Christ as far as the influence of Christianity is concerned. He had preached to most of the Roman Empire. As far as miracles were concerned, we hear that there were unusual miracles in the of Paul, such that people used to take handkerchiefs and send them to Paul. Maybe if he was the one preaching here, he would not be introduced like I was introduced. Have you seen those preachers that come from behind? Probably yes, because probably you may have come with 30 handkerchiefs, one for Mangoi, one for Kamal, one for because they are sick. And you just want Paul to touch, you know, to touch the body of Paul and then you mail them to your, to your brethren. That is the kind of a person we have. We have even been told that he had even gone to the third heaven. Even to hear things that are even not lawful to be spoken of. Yet, in, you know, in this age and time, we probably will not call him bishop. We will call him beyond the archbishop. Praise the name of Jesus. But even though... He had reached and he had attained all of this. He says that I may know him. I have not apprehended. I have not obtained. I have not achieved. I have not reached. Maybe most of us, if we were in Paul's uh, posture, we would add uh, Paul, the man of God, who has gone to the third heaven. Who actually touches people with handkerchiefs, and they get, you know, and they get healed. Paul 
Jesus. There was someone who used to sing that saying, Give me oil in my heart. Keep me burning. Keep me burning to the break of the day. Praise the name of Jesus. The enemy of the better is the good that you have. And the enemy of the better is, or the enemy of the best is the better that you have. There is always room for improvement. And they say there's the greatest room in the world. From glory to glory, he is changing us. His image to perfect in us. If we are not careful, we can be caught. You know, for us who have been in the church for a long time, we say we were saved when, you know, that many years. I was saved when I was informed for. That's a long time, to be honest. But that is not the glory that I should keep. I should keep on singing of the glory for today. Praise the name of Jesus. If we are not careful, we can become indifferent. We can become half-hearted. We can become Christians in name only, with no zeal, with no passion, no enthusiasm. We are yes and no Christians. At the end, we have no stand. We can be double-minded, indecisive, status quo, routine, going through the motions, no commitment, no fire, complacent, same old, same old, mediocre, you're going back and forth and going round in circles and still say, I am saved. But God is challenging us this day that we may know him, that we may desire like Paul to keep on knowing him and keep on knowing him. Praise the name of Jesus. And knowing him is not just the head knowledge. It's also experiential knowledge that we may experience him. Maybe last year you didn't have faith for a job. Determine that this year I'm going to have pain for a job. Last year I didn't have faith for a husband. Determine this year I'm going to have faith for a husband. Determine that you're going to the next level in the name of Jesus. Invest in your growth. Knowing again is not just head knowledge. And head knowledge is very important. I'm not disputing that. One of the things I like doing is reading. If you look at my hard work, today I didn't come. There are usually, at least I'm reading three books concurrently. Every single time. Even at work, I keep my Bible, I keep my telegram, I keep a book, I keep a magazine, and in my, in my, <laughs> in my past, I have a book. Because I believe head knowledge exposes you and you also ought to be continuous. But not just the head knowledge, but also experiential knowledge. Meaning that you have a time to, you know, to, to connect with God. When they say that growth is intentional commitment, you must want to grow. You must decide to grow. And you must make an effort to grow. And you must persist in growing. Praise the name of Jesus. And maturity is not achieved in a day, but it is dictated by your daily agenda. What are you doing every single day? I have not apprehended. Praise the name of Jesus. We are not, we are what we have habitually do. Therefore, excellence of character is not an act, but a habit. Finding time to gossip, finding time for daily Bible reading, Finding time to pray, finding time to worship. And even for us mamas, we need to have a me time. Every single day. <clears throat> me time, meaning that I read my Bible. <clears throat> I read my Bible and have a time to pray and worship. Praise the name of Jesus. So don't be content with the current level. Desire to go to the next level. Uh, so as we conclude the year, <clears throat> may look back and see God has been good, you have learned a lot. But there is still yet more to be accomplished. No Caleb was 85 years when they crossed over Jordan. But he said, I have the strength that I had when Moses sent us 40 years ago. Give me this mountain. And this, he said there is still yet more land to be possessed. I put it to you this morning. There is still yet more land to be possessed. Yes. And even as we grow old and as we pump the ears, there is one of uh, my favorite scriptures that keep on encouraging me. And it's in uh, Psalm uh, 92 and it says, uh, verse, verse 13, Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear 
worship. To declare that the Lord is upright. He is my Lord. And there is no unrighteousness in him. Even for us who are the years, when we are planted in the house of our God, we shall still be fresh and flourishing. Praise the name of Jesus. And we shall still bear fruit in all age. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord. The second part is one thing I do. Forgetting those things that are behind. And the third part would be pressing on. Continuous forgetting, implying a philosophy of life. When Paul says one thing I do, it's like saying if I give you a secret of life, if I was to tell you the bottom line of going forward, is that you forget what lies behind. Oh, yes. He says this is a practice. This is what I do. How I deal with issues. It's a critical ingredient. It's a prerequisite for going forward. You know, Paul could have sat there and said, oh my, I was there when Stephen was stoned. I even witnessed because I carried the clothes of those who stoned him. I did this and this. You know, he probably he would have killed some. He could have been hung up with the things that he did of the past. And by all means, when he went to preach, some of those things may have been hovering in his mind. But he decided even how to preach and even how to move forward and even how to fulfill my purpose, I have to forget what lies behind and press on. I don't want to believe that <clears throat> God just wants us to forget blanket forgetment, a forgetting, forget the blessings, forget what God has done. No, that's not what I mean. Actually, the book of Deuteronomy is a book of remembrance. Just remembering the glory of God and what he has done. Psalms 103, forget not his benefit. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So I'm not talking from that angle. Psalms 136 talks about remembering the Lord for his masses endure forever. So that is positive, and that drives us forward. What we are talking about is those things that when you remember, they drive you backwards. Those are the negatives that we must forget. Isaiah 43 and verse uh, 18 and 19 says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Shall it? Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it. I will even make a road in the wilderness, and leave us in the desert. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, devil can make you have this uh, mindset that he is always praying the negatives in your life. Sometimes we want to forget something, but that is kind of the things that we remember most, especially the negatives. It's interesting that the mind remembers what you want to forget and forgets what you want to remember. So for you to forget, it has to be very, very deliberate and very, very proactive. I have decided that I'm going to forget. Praise the name of Jesus. Forgetting those things that are behind and pressing forward. They tell us that if you are going to drive forward, you, have, you cannot be looking forward and looking back at the same time. And that is why they have put the windscreen to be bigger than the rear view mirrors. The rear view mirrors, you just check a little bit what is happening and then keep on moving forward. Praise the name of Jesus. So you cannot, and you can also not put new wines in old wineskins, meaning you have to change your mindset. You have to have a paradigm shift. You have to decide out of your own accord and forget what lies behind. I am going forward to the next level. How do we forget? They say, if you want to forget something, like now if you are a drunkard, and I'm not saying you were, but if you want to forget your drunkenness and your waywardness, you have to look for something that will take that space. They say that an exit strategy has to be accompanied by a replacement strategy. Meaning that if you are using two hours of drinking in the evening, you have to know what you're going to do with those two hours. You can decide I'm going to be, you know, helping my kids with the homework. I'm going to be helping my wife cook hay. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> You're not cooking that can help do something else. So that, that you, you know, that is not, you know, it's not left, left as a vacuum. They say that nature holds vacuum. So if you decide I'm going to stop drinking and just stay at home and do nothing, it's just a matter of time.
time before you go back. So you decide I'm going to stop this and I'm going to invest in something positive. Praise the name of Jesus. The book of Colossians tells us when you put up, then you have to put on. Glory to Jesus. And then we are told, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Meaning where there was evil, you are going to replace it with good because nature abhors vacuum. So you cannot leave that as a vacuum. Praise the name of Jesus. They tell us when the, the demons were cast out in Matthew, they went out there and found they didn't have any place. And then they decided, hey, let's go back and see how our house is. And they came back and found the house was empty. And then they went and got others, and the end of that person was worse than the first. I want to put it to you that they replaced the exit strategy. The forgetting that you're going to do has to be accompanied by a replacement strategy. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to just mention a few things uh, that we need to forget. <clears throat> Very quickly. One of us one of the things that we need to forget is our past sins. Like Paul, we could have been caught up with what we did. Some of us killed. Some of us did horrible things. And if our history was to be open, all of us have history. Believe you me. History. All of us have history. And if all of us was put out there, it would be not nice. But thank God that when we got saved, the Bible says, he, he was made sin that we might be the righteousness of God. He who knew no sin was made sin that we might be the righteousness of God. Yet you are the righteousness itself. Praise the name of Jesus. So you do not have to keep on going old history. The Bible says there is no, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the raw the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have set us free from the law of sin and death. Bible also says, if we are in Christ, we are a new creation. All things, say all the things, all are passed away, and they are dead and buried, and new things have come. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So like Paul, receive the forgiveness of God. You know, I've come across, there's one lady that really triggered my thinking, because she was saved, she was a worshiper, she had all the things going for her, and one time I was we were talking about somebody who was backslidden. And all of a sudden she started crying. And I asked her, why are you crying? You're praying for somebody who is backslidden and say, I am the one who needed the ministry. Because for some reason, the devil had told her that though she was saved, she had committed the unpardon of her sin. The Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. All our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So receive your ticket today for freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. Let not the devil intimidate you that you did this and did that. Tell him, I have been cleansed from all sins and I am a new creation in Jesus Christ. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to Jesus. The other one that we need to uh, forget is where we came from. And particularly uh, as the young people, we get compromised. We have, we have been delivered from Egypt, which is the life of sin, but we still have the Egypt mentality. That means you, we were delivered from some things, but we still are craving them. We are craving for melons, we are craving for garlic, we are craving for, we are craving for different things that do not satisfy. In our place where we live, there is a craving for our pleasure. Johi and all that kind of thing. So there is a like there's a club in Dallas called Nai, short for Nairobi Club. I'm telling you, we pray like Pastor and our people had gone there and circled seven days because our people get lost there. And some, some of them really do come to church. And actually, some of them want to be in the worship. I want to tell you, decide today whom you will serve. The Bible says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Elijah asked this this way, how long? How long will you waver between two opinions? If God is God, serve him. Praise the name of Jesus. He is worthy to be served. Praise the name of So forget where you came from. The Bible says, do not love the world. All the things that are in the world. If you love the world, it is passing by. The Bible says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world is passing away at the last of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Praise the name of Jesus. Changanya, changanya. Yes, you have And 
relationships, I declare, that needs to die mm. in Jesus' name. Mm. Some of us, some of them need to die today for you to go forward. Mm. Because they are dragging you forward, their preferences, their, you know, their opinions, their what, they are keeping you back. So decide that even those companies have to be forgotten. The Bible tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And the transformation is like uh, an egg, the four stages of a, of an, of an ins, uh, a butterfly, an, ins, an egg, a lava, a pupa, and a butterfly. We, have, we are to be transformed from daily to daily, daily, daily. But most of us are like chameleons. When we are with this group of people, we want to behave like them. If they are brown, we want to be brown. If they are green, we want to be green. But that is what we have been called for. The Bible says we need to be transformed by the renewing of, the renewing of our mind, not be conformed. A chameleon conforms, but we need to be transformed for the glory of God. Praise the name of Jesus. Number three, forgetting your mistakes or blow out and forgiving yourself. This is also another hindrance of people who want to move forward. Sometimes you blew it up, boom, something happened. You know, like you wake up and whoa, boom, I signed on the dotted line, I took a loan, I did this, and you find that from there on, unless you are very careful, you'll be driven by guilt. But God has offered forgiveness. If he tells you to forgive 70 times seven, it means that he's able to forgive 70 times? Praise the name of Jesus. So, you made a mistake, you felt guilty about it, receive the Lord's forgiveness. The shame of the past can actually drive us and unconsciously sabotage our forward progress. Some chapters in our lives, I want to put it to you, cannot be rewritten. If you got a baby, you cannot put the baby back. Praise the name of Jesus. You can always move forward and by all Please name that baby the best name you can. Ideal, smart, blessed, baraka. Praise the name of Jesus. Prophesy to that lady. They have no mistake at all. Praise the name of Jesus. And then move forward. Arise and move forward. Those chapters can be, you can start new chapters. They say that you cannot unscrabble an egg. You cannot change a scrabbled egg, but you can make an omelette. Praise the name of Jesus. When you have repented, when you ask for forgiveness, when you have done the restitution, and you have done all that you could, it is time to move forward. You may have failed at some point, but your message can become your message. And your scars can become your stars in the name of Jesus. I don't know how much time I have, but there is this story of a, a person you may all know who says I'm a friend of God. Israel Houston, you have heard him. He wrote his story in a Charisma magazine not too long ago, and he said how he was brought up. He was born out of a white mother and a dark chocolate father. So he, he's somewhere in between. And when he was growing up, actually the father disowned the lady. She was, I think, 17 or 18 and threw her out because she was a disgrace. And so she landed in California and was trying to figure out now my life, where does it start? And when she was there, she got saved. She accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. And she, when she started reading uh, the Bible, she came across the story of Jacob, where he was struggling with God. And he said, got it. My child shall be called Israel. So are the prince with God. And so as, as they continued to, uh, to, you know, to leave, the mother got married to a white man. Uh, a, a pastor for that man. And so they had a church and then his siblings were white. So they, they, he says that whenever they were asked, how come your brother is dark? They used to say because he is a fast <laughs> And uh, then he says that actually one day, one Christmas, they went to visit their in laws you know, their, their grandpa, you know, because they had, you know, their mother had been thrown away. And every kid was jumping on their grandpa's rap and he thought it was his turn to jump on grandpa's pap and he was thrown down. And that time he started figuring out, I, I guess I'm different. But you see the mother had already prophesied. He is a prince with God. His name 
name shall be called Israel. Praise the name of Jesus. Your message can become your message. Israel has really blessed the world. Praise the name of Jesus. And that which you may be thinking is negative in your life, turn it around and call it a blessing in the name of Jesus. You know, there's a sister in our church who says that when you praise when the devil expects you, otherwise he bamboos her. I don't know where she goes. She got that uh, vocabulary, but it keeps on ringing in my mind. I'm going to bamboos at the end of it. I'm going to praise when he expects me to be mourning in the name of Jesus. And baboos at him. To me, it looks like, oh my God, I don't understand this lady. She is way above me. You better bamboos at him. And he gets confused because you're going to praise when he is expecting you to mourn in the name of Jesus Christ. And then you can move forward. Forgetting unfortunate circumstances which are not of your own making. Some of us are born in poverty. You know, I went to have my nails done, and some of my nails are not there. <laughs> because I grew up in a place where I was, I didn't have shoes. Praise the name of Jesus. But that is not where I am. So where you came from does not dictate where you will be. Children brought up children and shows up to the wife and says, 
I've always struggled with this. I'm on the other side. I leave you to figure out your way, figure out your life. I'm a homosexual. What do you do? Are you going to swallow the razor blades? I <laughs> you have to move on with life. You know, in the olden days, uh, like our uh, grandmas used to get so mad. And what they would do, they would lift up their, you know, their dresses and put them on the head. They're so mad. But you know, when all is said and done, you can't live with your clothes. <laughs>
One thing I do, I mention a few things that you need to forget, and I want to believe that moving forward to 2015, we will take action. And number four, number three is that you are pressing forward. There is still much more to be accomplished. I want us to close our eyes and we pray. Praise the name of Jesus. Ali Jesus mighty name.